Good evening, groovy citizens, and happy, satisfying Saturday to each and every one of you. So y'all listen, you see all of this glistening that I have going on? It's hot. Right now, it is 84 degrees. The sun is beginning to move, at least from over where I'm sitting, but it is hot. And this is just, oh, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. This is just from coming out of my house, standing on the porch, and getting in this hot car okay so i cut my ac on so if you hear the fan blowing i do apologize but it is too hot to be sitting up in here without the fan on now i know some of y'all might be saying well michelle just roll the window down no because it's still too hot outside okay phone book update fail. thank you now also i did realize i was supposed to have gotten gas earlier and i did not so i need to do that when i am done doing this video i have on some my little booty shorts that i wear around the house and I will not be wearing those to the gas station. So I'm gonna go in the house, put on some jeans, and while this video is uploading, I'm going to get me some gas because a sister has to go to church tomorrow, which I hope each and every one of you will be doing. Now, let's jump into today's topic. But before I do that, so this morning, y'all, I stopped at Dunkin' Donuts and it was in a refrigerator. And I ended, I said, well, let me try this, what is this, kiwi watermelon refresher. And the lady said, would you like that with green tea? I said, sure, because I mean, I, don't, I didn't know how they were made. And I took a couple of sips and I thought, oh, this is disgusting. So I put it in the refrigerator <clears throat> and I said, well, I'll come back for it later on. And I realized I had to add a little bit of sugar to it because the way it was, it just wasn't working for me. But if you like it the way they serve it, that's great. Other than that, like I said, adding a little sugar to it, it's perfect. I would recommend that you try it. Now let's jump into today's topic. Today's topic is avoid these people before it's too late. And of course, this is based on stoicism as always. But I want to give you, I'm going to share with you 10 different types of people to avoid. And when I say avoid, honey, I mean avoid like the plague, okay? So, but before we get into those 10 different types of people, we are all actors in consistent interaction, exchanging gestures and words that shape our journey. However, among the people that cross our path, there are those whose actions and words are invisible daggers, come on now, that pierce our peace and undermine our serenity. These you see are the unmistakable signs that someone is not aligned with your inner journey and it's time to distance yourself from their bad influence. Let me put a pin right there. It is so important to understand and to know who is not, what did I say, aligned with your inner journey. I love that because too many of us, not me, but too many of us have those people in our inner circle that sh or some somewhere in our lives that should not be so have you ever stopped to consider the weight of envy and how it can cloud the essence of our achievements keep in mind your victories are not only yours but they are beacons of inspiration for everyone around you however there are some around you that have eyes that blaze with the fire of envy. So here's the thing, I've talked about this before, and I talk about how you can have people that are around you and they're clapping and they have the smile going and they're just clapping with everybody else and in their minds or in their breath, they say, look at this fool. <laughs> they think they're going somewhere, honey, they ain't going nowhere. <laughs> These people are clapping now, but they're going to bury them later. And y'all know I'm telling the truth because there are people that are like that. So Epictetus once says, it's not what happens to you, but how you react that matters. And let me just say this, that is so important. So if you don't remember anything else I said, I want you to remember that. It's not always what happens to you. It's how you react that makes the world, or and he said that matters, but it makes the world a difference, how you handle the situations. So remember, we all have a unique path to follow that's made just for us. Can I say that one more time? We all have a unique path to follow that is made just 
for us. So, you know, we oftentimes look at other people and we think, wow, you know, God has blessed them with this great hand and he only gave me this little bit, but they have all of this. But again, we all have a unique path to follow that's made just for us. Meaning your path is made for you, mine is made for me, okay? So Seneca warned us that slander is the weapon of the weak used by those who fear the truth. And those will be in the description box. So the next time you encounter envy or slander, take a deep breath and remember who you are and what you've achieved. Now, I'm gonna throw in my own piece to say, not only remember who you are, but I want you to remember whose, come on somebody, you are. Because that is always important to know. And then you don't have to worry about what other people are saying behind your back. Mm. Use these moments, not as stones in your path, but as steps to reach even greater heights turn any and all negativity into a driving force for your personal development. So Marcus Aurelius said, nothing is more disgraceful than insecurity. So here are some people you need to avoid before it's too late. Number one, the gossip. Great minds discuss ideas. Average ones discuss events. And small minds discuss people. As you know, that is a quote by Eleanor Roosevelt. So gossipers get pleasure from other people's misfortunes. While it may be fun at first, getting, let me air quote, getting the tea, okay? Over time, it becomes tiring and it hurts other people. So there are too many positive things going on in the world and too many things to learn to waste your time talking about the misfortunes of others. Now, here's the thing, okay? Here's the reality. We're all gonna get the, the let me air quote, the T from somebody from time to time. What I'm talking about when I say the gossipers, I'm talking about people that always have nothing but negative things to say. They always have nothing but negative things to gossip about. They never gossip about the good that's going on in somebody's life. You can have Susie over there who just got a, uh, well, either she got a promotion on her job, she started her own business, she just got married, bought a big, beautiful home, a big car, just had a baby. She has a whole list of all these positive things going on. And then you have Julie over here that all she can do is talk about the bad that's going on in Mary's life. That's a gossiper because Julie gets excited about Mary's death or whatever, the, I didn't mess the names up, but you know what I'm talking about. This person over here gets excited when this person has misfortunes going on. They never get excited about the good things going on in their lives. And I've actually had to ask people every now and then, does anything good ever happen to other people? Because all you tell me about is the negative. So people's downfalls, but you never talk about the positive in anybody's lives. So be careful that. Number two, the temperamental. Some people have absolutely no control over their emotions. They will project their feelings onto you, thinking that you're the one causing their issues. Temperamental people are hard to get rid of from your life because of their lack of control over their emotions and it makes you feel bad for them. So when push comes to shove, temperamental people will use you as their emotional toilet and should be avoided at all costs. Number three, excuse me y'all, my sciences are draining. Mm, the victim. Victims are hard to identify because you initially empathize with their problems. As time passes, you begin to realize that their time of need is all the time. There is an old saying that says, pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. Can I, and I don't know who said that. I'm gonna say it again. Pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. We will all experience the pain of heartbreak. I don't care who you are, 
And if you know me, you know I don't like to say I don't care, but in this case, I'm about to say it. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you live, where you grew up, how much money you have, where you work, what you drive, any of that. None of that matters. Everybody in their lifetime will experience heartache. And so that's just, it's inevitable. That's a part of life. However, suffering is optional. You can choose to walk around suffering from that person that hurt you. Or you can pick yourself up, dust yourself off and say, okay, moving on. Asking God to work on you, fix whatever it is in you that needs to be fixed and work, move on to the next person that he has for you. It's optional, it's your choice. So this captures the thinking of the victim. They choose to suffer every time. So just remember that the, the person that always wants to play the victim, they're choosing to be the, the victim. And let's just keep it real. We all have met somebody at some point in time in our lives who choose to, chooses to be the victim all the time. Let them tell it somebody is always doing something to them. Y'all know who I'm talking about, but I'm not gonna mention it. <laughs> but they always are complaining about people doing something to them. They're always the victim. Mm. Number four, the self-absorbed. You can usually tell when you are around self-absorbed self people because you start to feel completely alone. You are just a tool that they use to build their self-esteem. Mm. Number five, the envious. The envious person always thinks the grass is greener somewhere else. Even when something great happens to an envious person, they don't get any satisfaction from it. And this is because they measure their fortune against the world when they should be deriving their satisfaction from within. Spending too much time around envious people is dangerous because they teach you to trivialize your own accomplishments. Number six, the manipulator. Manipulators suck time and energy out of your life under the facade of friendship. They know what you like, what makes you happy, and what you think is funny. But the difference is that they use this information as part of a hidden agenda. Manipulators always want something from you. And if you look back on your relationships with them at all, I'm sorry, it's all take, 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 take with every little, I'm sorry, y'all, my handwriting. Mm. So if you look back over your relationship with those individuals, all they do is take, 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 and take some more with very little or no giving. So in other words, they're constantly taking from you, your energy, your love, your money, whatever it is that they can get from you, and they give very little, if anything, back. They will do any and everything to win you over just so they can walk all over you. And that is sad. So again, the, these people I'm sharing with you, I know you know these people, and even if they're not in your direct inner circle, you have encountered them, or maybe you know somebody else that's dealing with this type of person, I want to encourage you to encourage them to get rid of those people, cut them off. Number seven, the Dementor. We saw in the Harry Potter series, series uh, we learned that the Dementors were evil creatures that suck people's souls out of their bodies, leaving them a shell of themselves. Dementors suck the life out of the room by imposing their negativity and permissiveness upon everyone they encounter. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You ever, have you ever been in a room and somebody walks in and it's almost as if a dark cloud just falls over the place. When that person comes into a room, they just suck the energy and the life out of that room. Everybody can be laughing and talking and having a good time, but as soon as they come in that room, it's almost like, oh God, why do we even bother coming here? Keep your eye on people like that. Number eight, the twisted. They are either out to hurt you to make you feel bad or to get something from you. Otherwise, they have no interest in you. These people get deep satisfaction from the pain and misery of others. Be careful of that. The good thing is you can usually spot these people and quickly get them out of your lives. So if you know somebody that 
they get absolute pleasure out of other people hurting those are people that you want to stay so far away from i mean you want to stay as far as the east is from the west from those individuals because all they're going to do is just suck the life out of you and drain you dry and and here's the thing over the course of that friendship friendship i don't know what i just said but their friendship they are going to walk all over you number nine the judgmental these people have a way of taking the thing you most that you're most passionate about and making you feel terrible about it judgmental people choose not to learn from others who are different from them instead they choose to look down on others judgmental people serve to stifle your desire to be a passionate expressive person so you are better off getting rid of these people and it's really sad again it's something something else i talked about earlier but you do have people that are judgmental all the time i mean all the time and they're judgmental against everybody you your family your friends your co-workers their family their friends their co-workers your pastor the the teller at the bank the people at the grocery store they're just judgmental about everything but you ever notice how they're never judgmental about themselves because in their minds oh honey they're perfect the way they are but they love to judge everybody i always tell people like when i'm talking to people and they share something i may not necessarily agree with it but i always share with people Far be it for me to judge because I'm in no position to judge anybody. It's not my place to judge. And it's nobody's place to be honest with you, but it's not my place to judge you. Regardless of what you share with me with with me, especially if we are if you're my client and we're having a coaching session, always know that I will never judge you. Never, ever, never judge you. Because that's not my thing. It's not my place to judge. I am called to just encourage and show you love and compassion so i want to encourage you if you are that person that's always judgmental i want you to stop doing it because it's not helpful for anybody now if somebody asks you let me say this <clears throat> if someone asks you for your opinion about something it's all right to offer your opinion because they asked for it but if they did not ask keep it to yourself Keep it to yourself. Now, if it's a close friend, then it's all right to say, now, you know, I love you and I would never do anything or say anything to hurt you. But personally, I know you're doing ABC, but I think you should do X, Y, Z. But say it in such a way that you're not looking down on them. Because when you do that, it makes people feel like you're walking around thinking that your stuff don't stink when it does. Let me move on. <laughs> Number 10, last but not least, the arrogant. These people are a waste of time because they see everything you do as a personal challenge. Arrogance is false confidence and it all it's always masks, it always masks major insecurities, insecurities. And that is so true. You ever meet somebody that's arrogant all the time? All they're really doing is trying to cover up their own insecurities. See, they really appreciate what you're doing. They're proud of you, but they'll never tell you that. They have this arrogance about them, as if to say, mm, I can do that better. And I've met people like that. No matter what you do, they always have something to say, oh, that's nice, but you know, I would have done it this way. Okay, well, nobody asked you. Oh, I did that before, and my my thing turned out really great. Again, nobody asked you. So just keep in mind, when you come across arrogant people, their issue really is not with you. Their issue is within themselves. But they choose to take it out on you. Okay? So, y'all, that's it. That's all. That is my time. I'm going to bid you good day, like I said, because I need to run across the street and get me some gas because... I do need some gas and I have to get up and go to church in the morning and I don't want to have to do it in the morning and I don't want to wait till I come out of service. So I'm going to just go across the street right now and get my gas. Having said that, I want to say thank you so much for giving me just a little bit of your time to speak life into you. 
Hopefully something I shared with you resonates with you and it helps you to be a better judge of character. Now keep in mind, when I say be a better judge of character, I'm not saying judging people because I just talked about that. No, 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 we're not judging anyone, but we're keeping our minds open about the people that we prefer not to spend our time with or have them around us because all they do is suck the energy and the life out of you. They bring nothing to the table. So why are they there? Okay. And if you're just that hard up and press for a friend, go online and find one. I don't know. When you go to church, make some new friends, make some, I, I, I don't know, wherever you find your friends. But those individuals that I just taught, these 10 people that I just shared with you, they don't, they have no business being in your life, in your life. And they are not friends because to be honest with you, they're always out for themselves. Okay. Now, having said that, if you're new to watching my videos, I want to say welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. I do car conversations every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So come back on Monday and I'll have another motivational topic for you here on my channel. I'm all about uplifting individuals and helping people live a better quality of life, okay? Never will we tear down here because that's not my goal and it's not even what I'm all about. For those of you, this is not your first rodeo. I wanna say welcome back. You know I miss you when I don't get a chance to see you. Go out there, you guys. Enjoy the rest of this beautiful Saturday. Like I said, right now it is 84 degrees and it is still warm. So wherever you go, please make sure you have water with you. You stay hydrated because even though the sun is starting to, to set, it doesn't actually fully set, I think until like 8.30, 8.45 or so. So we still have a couple more hours, but even though the sun is not up at full blast, it is still warm out. So I want you to make sure you stay hydrated. Have fun wherever you're going, have fun. Enjoy your company and the event that you're, that you're attending, but also please be careful. Be careful where you're going. Be careful of the people around you. As I always like to say, if they didn't come with you, they should not be leaving with you, okay? Because that's a good way to end up getting hurt. Just be careful of your surroundings. Because y'all know what? I love you. I love you so, so much. I love you to the moon and back. And there is nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing, that you can ever do about it. Because I love you and I want nothing but the best for you. And as I always like to share with you, the best is yet to come. You may not be where you want to be right now. Things may not be going the way you want them to be going right now. But don't you give up and don't you give in because the best is yet to come. Love you all. We'll talk again on Monday.